I shared this experience on slash x slash a little while back, but may as well post again. This isn't exactly paranormal though, just bats hit balls and nailed to the wall schizo. This is the story of the crazy black shaman. It's about 10 years ago, probably almost to the date because it was summer. I was still in college at the time and remember it being hot that day, but it's Florida so that could be any time. I'm walking around my apartment complex near dusk just stretching my legs since I felt restless. A guy pulls up in a car and stops me. His arm is covered in those snap bracelets, jeweled bengals, gold, all that shit and he's got some pretty thick dreads, but is otherwise well kept. Asks if I knew where a certain block of buildings was and I point him that way. A few minutes later I'm still walking and he circles back, his friend wasn't home he said. Starts shooting the shit with me and asks if I went to a certain collage, which I did, from here we just start chatting because he seems chill enough and the apartment was gated and I was young and dumb. So eventually he gets out of the car and we just sit together in the outside male area talking. After about 10 minutes this guy says that I have an aura about me that called out to him to speak to me, however he senses that I'm hiding my true persona then goes on to tell me about 20 other things about myself that are pretty goddamn spot on. In hindsight it's basically cold reading and some good guesses more or less. So we keep chatting and he says that I haven't been living up to my potential, that I was meant for something more because I was born with the crown of David. That I've been holding myself back by second guessing myself and keeping to my own little world. Around here is where it starts to go full on wackadoo. He calls me a lion of Judah. He then proceeds to proclaim me a king and literally kisses my hand and the ground I've traded on saying that he has an immense amount of respect for me. The dude literally crawls on his hands and knees for this. He tells me that I crave the feeling of true success, which I do, and have yet to achieve it as I was too concerned with what I knew, when the key is who you know. He then goes on to say he's been all over the world, shows me pictures of him hanging out with celebrities and stories about everyone from Michael Jackson to J. Lo, even Bush Sr. His body is covered in trinkets, each one has a story and was a gift. The guy has a great and warm energy about him, always has a smile on his face. He then goes on to say we should become friends so he can help me achieve my goals by helping me network and realizing and coming to terms with who I am. We exchanged contact information. He said that if I wanted I could call him and we could meet at a Taco Bell or whatever later tonight and shoot the shit again. The whole thing felt like some sort of hazy dream. I remember that distinctly, like it wasn't real at all. So after talking about it with some friends and being told, hell no, I decided to go meet him because nothing bad can happen at a Taco Bell surely. I arrived and the prophet was sitting at a table by himself smiling already when I got there. We pretty much covered the same things as before despite me trying to start the conversation with small chit chat. The main focus of this one though was realizing who and what I was. That last one strikes me as the most odd in hindsight. The first step being to cast aside my self-doubts and anxieties and do what I wanted, to focus on me for once instead of worrying if everyone else around me was happy and if I could better help others. Standard stop hanging yourself on a cross for other people's stuff I guess. He mentioned again that I had great power and with that, as I grow into myself and start down my journey that I would be capable of great compassion, or if abused, great evil. He further continued not to concern myself with many things as I had great beauty and my energy drew people to me. He noted this a few times, as most of the people that also came into Taco Bell sat quite close to us despite it being a rather large one. He then instructed me to psychically read him as he had me the night before, I nailed quite a few things, including a blind object test of him having a folded business card in his left hand, but was also spectacularly wrong on a few other things. He seems to think I may have some presence or medium abilities. He then stated that he'd like to go with me to downtown Orlando and walk around the area to help fine-tune my persona by gauging my energies when exploring and interacting with these different people. Consent stress on exploration as, there is no discovery without it, exploration. I have no clue when the first persona game was released, but these are his exact words. Constant use of persona. 
When I mentioned that I had another friend that would like to meet him and maybe come along he seemed shocked and asked if I had told her anything about him, I backpedaled with a lie and said that I had not, but thought she and he would get along. He stated that the trek would be about me and that if she wanted to meet him she certainly could, but wanted to focus on solidifying my foundation first. While alarming, he did state that, never let them see your hand on the first game. You're still building yourself. If you let her in you're giving her the blueprints to your foundation and who knows, she might have it in her head to take out a load bearing stone one day and fuck you up. I eat a taco and say I'll think about it and leave. We exchange numbers. The weird dreamlike feeling hits again during the meeting and drives back. The next day he began texting me on my phone. A phone I no longer have for reasons that will become obvious. This is an except I had saved of it. Him, I had seen you walking around for a long while and always wanted to talk to you. Me, hey, do you mind if I bring another friend along? Him, no, you cannot do that, this is your foundation, it must be about you. He pretty much sensed that follow up instantly. We go back and forth a bit more, but there's no small talk, it all goes back to me. In both texts and the meeting he asked if I had mentioned him to anyone after this. He seemed rather intent on knowing. Red flag even to a retard like me. The next red flag came after more texts which made it clear that he was way too fucking interested in me. Every time we've talked he just seems a bit too peppy and focused on me. Every conversation is about me and my potential. Not even my father or preacher which I had a great relationship with ever had the amount of interest this guy had for me. On reflection it's chilling, sort of how cheery Ted Bundy was. My gut reaction after about two nights while speaking with him after the meeting was a resounding N.O. to his downtown trip. Even by his own advice I'm making the right choice. I searched his name and number and he's clean. Too clean to the point of a possible alias. No. I did not keep track of any of that after all these years because I desperately wanted to forget and move on. I text him back and say I don't think I can continue this and that I don't think I'll do another meeting and think we should go our separate ways. He calls immediately and there's agitation in his voice. I don't remember much of what was said, but I call the phrase, I'm very disappointed and hurt. I apologize and hang up. An icy feeling of dread washes over me at this point even though I was sure I had just, cut the cord. I ignore it, but I think I may have some intuition after all because the next year was a waking nightmare. He continues texting me off and on asking how I am and if I've reconsidered. I tell him I'm sticking to my last message, but wish him well. He keeps texting me multiple times a day every day for the next week. I eventually delete his contact from my phone and I block his number. A few weeks go by and I see his car in the distance of the apartment complex. I freeze, but remember, hey he had a friend who lives here, not a big deal and just walk in the opposite direction. When I go to my part-time job or college I see his car parked in parking lots before I arrive, sometimes on the road. Maybe it was my imagination, but I could swear it was him. It was one of those old boxy Volvos with a yellow billabong sticker on the back bumper and a CD hung from the rear view mirror. It's been about a month since I last texted him and I'm in the Target on the corner of Goldenrod and University in Winter Park, Florida. Just shopping for some bullshit. I can't even remember what I was buying, but that dreamlike feeling hits me again and I look forward to a plastic display and catching something. In the reflection, he's behind me about 20 feet, away in another aisle. Not shopping or looking at anything. He's just standing there. Looking dead ahead at my back. I walk on and pretend not to notice, but leave the store without buying anything. The next day I drove to Walmart and bought a hunting knife. On the way home I stop by the police department and they say they can't help with anything. At this point my stress is through the roof. That's when I get it, a text when driving home from an unknown number. How are you? Hope you're well. Do any fun shopping? Every day from then on I'm clutching this knife carrying it with me everywhere. 
Almost once a week I get a text from a new number asking something or talking as though a conversation was being continued. Foolishly I typed out once asking who it was. Come on Anon, it's me, your friend. Your persona should have told you that. I can feel the color drain from my face. Everywhere I went I either saw him out of the corner of my eye or his car parked somewhere I was going on the road, either imagined or not. He's still texting me, always from different numbers, even at Christmas. I moved apartments later that year to live with my sister and for a long while everything is fine and quiet. Then the knocking start. About once every other week when I'm home alone there's a knock. Always a random night of the week. The text messages stop and for a while the knockings do too. It's been almost a year since I had seen him at Target. My sister and I are home and there's a pounding on the door. There's a desperation behind it and the dream feeling comes back. It goes on for a full three minutes before it stops. She's wide-eyed and begins to quietly sob. Later on alone in my room I come to that feeling myself. Text messages continue. It's fun going to new places, don't you agree? I got a new phone, new number, everything. I have a friend drive me to a lot and trade in my car, my sister and I move apartments again and terminate our lease. I got a new job. A bit anticlimactic, but I haven't heard from him since and now possess a very large collection of guns. My new apartment layout also affords me an overwatch position with a kill zone and single point of entry. I started working out and became more aggressive in my career, basically transforming as a person. I haven't thought about the crazy black shaman in a while, but looking back as I've typed this I almost think he got the change he was looking for in the end. TL, DR, stalkers are scary, buy a gun. Hey stalker, hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. But since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.